For at TV, the world is thinking. How is the IPCC responding to the many concerns voiced by scientists that scientific inquiry does not support humans as the cause of global warming? Well, you know, I'm sure when Newton discovered that uh, the fall of the apple was the result of gravity, <laughs> there were several who disputed that. I mean, new, new knowledge is always opposed. Uh, I was asked this question by a bunch of skeptics in New Zealand early this month, and I recited two lines from Goldsmith's poem, The Deserted Village, where he talks about uh, the, the teacher, uh, about whom he said, in argument they possessed his wondrous skill, even though vanquished he could argue still. <laughs> now, the point is, you have a transparent, comprehensive, extremely widespread process involving the best scientists and experts from all over the world, telling you that climate change is for real. And this is not something that the authors working on IPCC reports have invented. This is based on peer-reviewed literature. That's the manner in which the IPCC functions. We don't pick up a newspaper article and based on that come up with our findings. This is on the basis of very rigorous research which has stood the test of scrutiny through peer reviews. Now, if despite that there are people who believe that human beings are not responsible, well, I wish them luck. I suppose uh, they would at some stage become part of history like the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> there is one that exists even today and these gentlemen and ladies, if there are any among them, ladies are generally smarter in these respects, um, uh, they get together once a year and try to convince each other that the earth is still flat. I suppose we'll still Tom have a few Freeman says it is. Yeah. <laughs> He's making a lot of money telling us that it is. That's true. You know, uh, this reminds me, though, of the science debates that have surrounded our efforts to deal with the health effects of air pollution for many years. And every time uh, the government has tried to move forward in a policy that caused some change, there's always been a, an immediate uprise in the uh, skepticism, whether it was cigarettes and tobacco, or whether it was the diesel particulate or toxic air contaminants. And there's no doubt that whenever uh, people are asked to do something that may involve change, uh, we suddenly begin to be a lot more skeptical about the, uh, about the science. But it seems to me, and I, I am convinced by the science, but it seems to me that uh, most of what we're talking about asking people to do to take the precautions that need to be taken to stop the growth in emissions of greenhouse gases are things that they should be doing anyway for other reasons. The co-benefits, as we like to call Absolutely. them, from the perspective of health, of air pollution, of green technologies, of jobs, whatever it is, these things in and of themselves would justify the measures that we're talking about in California. 